Hello, everyone, and welcome to another News Coulomb video. And uh, <laughs> this is the efficiency test I think everybody was hoping for. So I'm going to go ahead and do a 75 mile per hour run. Um, I just got done with the 56 mile per hour and 90 uh, kilometer per hour uh, efficiency test. So check that one out if it interests you. But this is going to be 75 miles per hour or 120 kilometers per hour. Uh, again, based on what I've seen on the speedometer, based on what I've seen with the uh, Torque Pro app, this is actually, uh, the Bolt EV's speedometer is actually fairly close within half a mile per hour. Uh, so this should give us a very good measurement. I'm still going to be running the air conditioner. It's up to about 85 degrees. Uh, and, you know, I lowered my tire pressure to 39 PSI, but that should have less of an impact uh, on this higher speed run. Uh, just a couple of notes, though. I know a lot of people do their A to B to A testing, that round trip, and they think that it compensates for everything. Uh, if you're setting a baseline efficiency, it really doesn't work, though. And the problem with it is if you're driving into a headwind, it takes more energy than you get back if you even if you get that same wind as a tailwind. You're still usually at about a 5% lower uh, than what real world uh, or realistic efficiency would be if you weren't dealing with those winds. The same thing is true with elevation increases. Even if you end up with a net zero elevation change, the extra energy that it takes to overcome an elevation and then return, uh, you don't ever see it back fully. And even with a 70 to 80 percent efficient uh, regenerative braking system, you're going to see losses that aren't really represented. So uh, a to B to A testing or, um, you know, round trip testing. It's a good way to get a basic measurement, but it can't compensate for some of the other factors. So really, if you're dealing with any of those other factors, you need to acknowledge that it's real world testing and not actually true efficiency testing that people can use as a baseline to extrapolate for their own experiences, whatever weather they might encounter. But anyway, let's jump right into the 75 mile per hour testing. I'll put it all on video and uh, I'll speed it up. But for you data hounds that want to see everything, well, then I'll, I'll see what I can do. All right, so we're at 85 degrees. Uh, it's a quarter after 12, basically. Uh, we've used 11.27 kilowatt hours. We're going to use a little bit more getting to the freeway, but not too much. Uh, this was from the last testing. I'm going to go ahead and clear it out. As you can see, uh, we're at a 39 more or less PSI per, per corner. And actually, I'm going to reset this as we get to the freeway on ramp. And here we go. Now, Torque Pro has us listed as 74.5, but if we go up to 76 miles per hour, let's see what it says. It says 75.8. It's a little bit more. Um, just given the fact that we're already using the air conditioner, I'm just going to stabilize it at the 74.5. Uh, that will fit within our, you know, our sort of uh, slop of what the efficiency is actually going to be. Now, again, this should be a slightly longer route, so it should, I think, be a little over 20 miles. But it's fine because we're doing 75 miles per hour.
So seven seventeen point two kilowatt hours used um, so far, but you know that incorporates a lot of other driving. For this A to B leg, it was seventeen point eight miles, but it was a little bit less than that getting off the freeway, about seventeen point five, seventeen point six. But the average kilowatt hours stayed pretty much consistent by the time I exited the freeway, which is a uh, three point three miles per kilowatt hour. Okay, so that was our a to B leg for the 75 miles per hour or the 120 kilometers per hour. And this efficiency is in line with what I've seen. So by the time you account for the deceleration off the freeway, we were back up to 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. And uh, that's with maintaining really the 5% of energy use going toward climate control, which for these numbers would account for about another 0.1, uh, 0.15 uh, miles per kilowatt hour efficiency. Again, you can take that into account or not. Again, this is my typical 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour uh, when you balance out the acceleration to get up to speed with the deceleration coming back out of, out of speed. This is very typical of the efficiency that I see under normal conditions. So the temperatures are starting to increase a little bit. You know, we're, we're pushing close to 90, which is why running the climate control at 73 um, degrees is getting close to 20, uh, 20 degrees below ambient temperature. That's what's pushing up that energy consumption. Anyway, though, this last leg, I'm going to do a quick bit of shopping before my trip. And, uh, you know, I have another 500 miles to go from here, but I'm going to do the B to A leg and just balance out the efficiency that we see and we'll be able to sort of conclude uh, based on a fairly controlled circumstances, A to B to A testing on the same roads at uh, 75 miles per hour or 120 uh, kilometers per hour. I was worried that uh, we might have waited too long and some wind has picked up, but it looks like it's pretty much what's expected. it does look like the wind is starting to pick up I wasn't I wasn't just imagining things okay well taking my own advice this is partially going to invalidate uh, my testing because this wind wasn't present when we did the A to B test so I guess what a difference 30 minutes can make I kind of knew this was a possibility uh, just because it was eerily calm early on uh, but now we're facing a bit of a headwind and um, I mean it's good in that we have such terrible air quality but but usually if it's gonna be windy in these parts it's either already started to pick up uh, or it doesn't at all and you know it's it's already afternoon at this point and I would have thought that if we were going to face wind it would have
been present earlier on, um, but apparently not. So now we'll see. It, it still doesn't look strong enough to have a huge impact on the efficiency, but it could. So, And there's no real way for me to test now to, to sort of see what it is other than knowing that it's present. So. All right, so there you have it. So by the time we come to a stop coming off of the freeway, we we're at 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour. So that's about a 35 mile round trip. Uh, it was 17.5 miles each way. It seems like that we were on the freeway. These efficiency numbers are a little bit lower than what I'm used to. Uh, you know, if you average it out, it is 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. But there was a bit of a headwind picking up on the return trip that wasn't really present on the trip out, but it's within the margin of error. The other thing is to, you know, 4% energy usage to uh, air conditioning, which would bring the average up usually by about 0.1 miles per kilowatt hour. Whether you choose to include that or not is up to you. And then the other thing of course is lowering the tire pressure to 39. At these speeds, it wouldn't really have a huge impact, but again, it would count for the sort of marginal difference. Like I said, had um, I had sort of called out Bjorn and, you know, when he had done his efficiency testing of the Bolt EV, and had he come up with 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour, you know, I, would, uh, I wouldn't really have addressed it. It would be within the margin of error based on what I've seen from people who drive Premiers or uh, Bolt EV LTs that have different modifications or just random weather patterns, right? 0 0.1, 0 0.2 miles per kilowatt hour difference um, in various efficiency testing. That's all within reason. My, my concern was, like I said, it was about 15% lower than what I typically see. So, and like I said, even this is marginally lower than what I typically see. But then again, um, I'm not necessarily driving the way I would usually drive and the tire pressure. But overall, like I said, an average of 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour at uh, 75 miles per hour or uh, 120 uh, kilometers per hour. That's what I would set at a baseline, right? 3.2 Again, without air conditioning, 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. But anything beyond that is really just going to be real world testing. I might do another run at some point in time uh, doing 65 miles per hour. I believe it's about 12 to 15 miles each direction. That could also give a, a sort of a middle ground. One of the things that we still have to do with the Bolt EV is, is map out its efficiency over a span of different speeds. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and head back on my regular 500 mile trip. And, um, but yeah, that's my data point. So again, all of my attempts is to do is provide a baseline and the conditions were about as good as you can expect outside of a, a control track and, you know, standardized efficiency testing. But anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please uh, like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Um, helps me do videos like this. And uh, thank you for watching.